सो आई वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ क्यू पाई ए आई आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड नाउ यू कैन आस्क योर क्वेश्चन वन बाय वन एंड आई वुड ऑल्सो रिक्वेस्ट यू कैन रेज योर हैंड और यू कैन ऑल्सो पुट योर क्वेश्चन इन द चैट एज वेल विच एवर वी आर यू आर कम्फर्टेबल विद so who would like to go first yeah vidhu please yeah yeah hi uh, so this is vidhu uh, so i just went through this uh, uh, basics of quantum mechanics so i just finished that only uh, so in that i can see uh, the topic like uh, preparation and measurement uh, so uh, i didn't get a better understanding of what preparation and measurement is so if some someone can explain me that it will be good okay maybe uh, vidu uh, can you hear me i can explain you yes yes so uh, if you see mathematics as a whole right uh, okay. it is a study of sets and functions on the sets right? yes so how you change x into y by function f right yes, so this yes. is a study and basically same the computer programming also there is a input there is a transformation in the job yes so uh, very broadly speaking uh, mathematics computer science uh, is a study of uh, sets and functions on the sets right so here the same thing quantum mechanics as a whole is also input transformation out so what is input is what you prepare so that is a preparation so it is like explaining quantum mechanics in one line it is just okay. simple diagram the whole quantum mechanics is nothing but preparing something and similarly whole mathematics is nothing but set and transformation on the sets that's it uh, whole computer science is uh, same same so it is from that very broad i view explaining uh, in one line uh there is input state which you prepare right and then how you change that state you apply unitary transformation or cptp map and on the output state how you will read it you will read it by measurement and measurement will give you probabilities so these are the three main things uh, you know like uh, is described in that lectures uh, in detail like what is the preparation means input state what is the evolution means which is a unitary evolution or cptp map and in the end what you perform is measurement how you describe the measurement mathematically what measurement means and in the measurements you will get the data and the data you compute the probability for different outcomes and that's uh, that is all uh, i mean throughout the lecture this is you know like a summary of the whole quantum physics so uh, so this uh... you uh, said the unitary transformation right so this transformation is called I mean, interpreted can be interpreted as the functions in mathematics yeah so yeah. Is, okay. what are linear transformation linear transformation are function on the vector space okay these are the linear functions right and we want unitary because we want to conserve the probability okay so that's why unitary operator don't change the inner product and from the inner product we get the probabilities so basically unitary uh, transformation is required because we want to conserve the probability cptp map is basically also the same cptp means completely positive so it probabilities are positive and uh, so input and output sh- should give the positive probabilities right negative probability and completely positive is which preserve the positivity of the probability and tp means trace preserving trace basically means some of the probability has to be one so 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 basically it means like a input uh, state represent a legitimate probability vector and output also should represent a legitimate probability vector and probability vector is basically have a positive entries and some uh, some up to uh, add up to one i mean this is the basic Okay, and so measurement can be called as evaluation, also, right? Like we are we are evaluating something, correct? Uh, uh, so measurement is uh, not evaluation. E- evaluation can be po- uh, think as a post processing. Measurement is measurement. Like uh, you get the data. Once you uh, you get the data, you can do many evaluations on from the data. You can and then draw many conclusions, right? 
so evaluation is kind of post processing measurement is measurement uh, to better data you yes, okay. you, you you see this if you are doing experiment with a photon you see which detector it goes to which detector clicks and those clicks you will get a data and then from data you estimate the probability you make different estimation and then you evaluate such in situations whether uh, the evaluation is a kind of post processing of the data okay so the outcome of a measurement may not be a defined state correct uh, or, or we get a defined state after measurement. outcome outcome of a measurement is not the state it is the result like okay so oh, okay. Uh, when i toss the coin i get get uh, what will be the outcome head or tail right yes so uh, outcome uh, I mean, you can represent it uh, with the state uh, for uh, a particular measurement apparatus, but that is not a very precise state. Okay, so maybe like only it probabilities we are getting. Usually, correct. people say it gets projected into that state and that state. But once photon is detected, get absorbed by the detector, the photon is no more left, so no more state exists. Like, but only. Uh, this information exists that this particular detector clicks. So, so that is not very precise, but yeah, you can make in certain cases uh, some, uh, some something approximate. Uh, yeah. Uh, and second question I have is uh, it's regarding the quantum entanglement. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, uh, I uh, I don't get the concept very well. Uh, this quantum entanglement it's like is it dependent on it says that it is dependent on the other uh, something like that, uh, right? suppose you have a two coins right uh, each coin have head and tail and you just glue them together so that both uh, heads are on the same side okay? for both the coins of course then uh, by definition both tail will be though on the same side as well right so when you uh, glue them together, you weld them together, and then you toast both the coins, you will get a always head-head, tail-tail results because they are glued. Hmm. They are not independent of each other. They are related to each other. They are stick to each other, right? Okay. So there is a correlation between the outcome, head-head, tail-tail, head-head, tail-tail. But you know, uh, when you toast the next one, for example, this, this toast, you will get head-head. Next toast is totally random outcome. But whatever outcome you will get, they will be correlated for the coin. So first you get head at, maybe next time you don't get head at, but you get tail tail. But the tail and tail in itself is a correlation. So this is such kind of situation is called correlation. And this is classical correlation. Why quantum correlation are different? Because there, uh, there exist many different measurements and you see correlation in not only in one measurement setting but also in different measurement setting that's why uh, they are much more stronger and there are some mathematical uh, proof uh, i mean there is a very fundamental work uh, by john bell which give bell inequality and classical correlation does not violate bell inequality and quantum correlation are so strong that they violate bell inequality right and such uh, such a thing is used in quantum cryptography if if bell inequality is violated which shows that the there is a presence of quantum correlation which shows that your communication channel is absolutely secure so uh, security proof are based upon bell inequality so it has a very practical application in quantum cryptography okay so when you say it's correlated, so how do you like uh, kind of establish this correlation? I told you, like when you glue two coins, so the outcomes, when you toss two coins together, so they are glued. I mean, uh, either you will get a head head or tail tail, right? So the outcomes are, uh, you know, correlated. No, but like, can you explain in terms of uh, quantum uh, mechanics? So this is the example of how the correlation. But then you have to uh, quantum mechanics. If you want to, uh, if you want me to explain that, uh, uh, then you have to perform experiment with entangled photons. Oh, okay. Okay. So the glue. What I what I mean is, if you look at my video, so you see these two coins. 
yeah. so if i show you a bit closely so it is uh, uh, one side is the other one if i toss this one either i if i call this one head i get head head or i will get a tail tail okay right? so if i glue them together like this so these outcomes are correlated okay so that's just simple classical correlation i want to Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, sir. So I think yeah. I done with my questions. Yes. Sir. Uh, thank you so much, Arun. I hope whether you got your answer, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Aditya. Now you can unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Thank you. So I have a doubt regarding uh, a question. Miss, its interpretation in in an assignment problem. In quantum algorithm part three and Deutsch algorithm part two, first problem is I have some problem in understanding the last part. Is what actually what it is asking? Uh, so I I, I think I, if I, you can explain, okay. If I you can explain the problem the because the I don't know the problem. Okay. So in the problem, the, 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 there is uh, there is Alice and Bob and and both Alice and Bob respectively have. Two n bit strings with them. Alice has x, and Bob has y. And Alice has to determine a Boolean function, a Boolean function f from uh, from the set, which is defined on like x cross y to zero to the set zero comma one uh, to the set zero comma one with least communication between herself and Bob. Consider the parity function where parity is the Zor function operation, and f of x y is x naught Zor x one Zor x or the Zor still x x x n minus one and again Zor x y naught plus y one Zor plus all till Zor till y n minus one. So the question is Bob communicates a bit string w to Alice so that she can determine f. What is the minimum number of bits she can represent? That can represent the blue. Okay. So this I this have to look. Uh, why don't you write uh, email to us? Uh, uh, certification at the because that question is uh, prepared by one of my colleagues. And, uh, so I cannot immediately uh, tell you what will be the answer. And but uh, you, you, why don't you, you know, like a question and maybe write a piece of paper, and um, then 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 send it to us, and then uh, uh, we will reply. Or the person who prepared the uh, question, you know, he have a better idea. He will reply. Uh, Aditya, I'm putting the email ID in the chat. There you can email your question. Okay. Okay. I have one more. Miss, some one doubt. Uh, one to add. Yes, so, sir. Yes, sir. So, there, there was one theorem. A result like that, like any unit, any operation can be split into three rotations. Means in y-axis, two in z-axis, yes. and one in yes, around yes, y-axis. Yes, so, so means while solving a problem is means like the topology gets are I had to. Find the like first. First, I had to find under root x uh, the uh, root square root of the operation poly x, and then I had to split into three cells. So means I was able to do somehow uh, means using some problem. But I just wanted to ask that is there some mechanism to do or means just like we have to use the like for example that x is Hermitian and uh, unitary so that using like like group operations like it is means it behaves like it the operations are like group operations like they come. Uh, Is you can easily multiply, and so that you have to use, or there is some method that time. Yeah, but uh, that uh, uh, maybe I mute you, and so uh, um, that that thing, uh, uh, the any rotations can be, you know, break into three elementary rotation. This is a very old and fundamental result, I think, maybe two hundred year ago, but it's uh, maybe even before quantum mechanics. Uh, the reason is because a two-level system have a one-to-one -one correspondence with the two-level is a two-complex space, C2 we call it, a, a space of two dimension uh, over the field of complex numbers, right? Have a one-to-one -one correspondence with the real space of three dimension, and there is a theorem in three dimension that any rotation can be decomposed as a product of three rotation provided. 
uh, you take two uh, known collinear uh, axes of rotation so so this is a very fundamental result so the same from that result we uh, uh, say that uh, uh, in the quantum case it is possible it is only possible in case of uh, single uh, qubit right uh, because over there all the unitary operations are rotation are rotation in, in in real real space rotation of block vector basically uh, uh, so, so uh, uh, i think you have to uh, choose uh, which two axes you want to uh, decompose so you can uh, take r z theta r z alpha r y beta r z uh, gamma so these are two axes you choose z y z an angle you choose uh, alpha beta gamma to decompose a given unitary in two dimension and then you have to find out uh, uh, alpha beta and gamma uh, by comparing uh, the entries of uh, uh, you know uh, right hand side you will get a matrix left hand side you will get a, get a matrix a matrix so if you come if you compare by entry you get a four equations right solving those so four equations four. you will get uh, alpha beta gamma values uh, for which this decomposition is uh, uh, you know like uh, holds so but, but but you you see that if you use another convention you use r z x r z uh, r r x r y r x then the alpha beta gamma will be depend uh, will be different so so you uh, alpha beta gamma depend upon which axis you choose to decompose but uh, you know like you choose uh, uh, let's say x y x z y you know x z y z or things like that so then uh, you have to compare the these entries and that's how you solve okay and sir just one last miss one small question was that the born rule that we means we have used means throughout means in con uh, this course mm -hmm. for the for like means we are calculating expectation value means, yeah, by finding the trace and sir mm -hmm. so uh, means there the is there some proof for that means why the probability is like that only and is not uh, so and, uh, uh, this is kind of empirical result and uh, born uh, get a nobel prize for that particular rule I mean, in fact, Bohn Nobel Prize is from is that, from that equation. equation. It was so fundamental because, because, you know, like that you how you are getting these results. So how whatever input you give and uh, you know like uh, how you explain them the result. You see, the Bohn rule is uh, you know probability p is equal to trace of rho and uh, measurement of rate uh, p, right? it explain the whole experiment right so this is a mathematical equation where rho represent your preparation and uh, and then uh, this p represent your measurement apparatus right and then uh, this, uh, this operator p and then probability you will get is come from the measurement results so it's give you know like uh, it, it, this one equation explain uh, your whole mathematical apparatus where you prepare and measure Preparation is by row and measurement is by measurement operator. Let's say projector B, and from the result you expect uh, the probability is B. Uh, you know, like which is your result outcome. So uh, I mean, uh, so this is uh, you know, uh, and I, I think much more fundamental than Bohn rule. I mean, with which you can derive uh, uh, Bohn rule uh, using much more fundamental assumptions. I think uh, it doesn't exist. I mean, people have tried. Uh, there are some some things you, if you want to define any measurement, you have to take a positive operators and things like that. But again, I mean, these are you know, very little improvement. So I think uh, Bohn rule is uh, you know fundamental and nothing you can try. I mean, Bohn rule people try to uh, you know surpass it many times, but uh, not not. Able to so far, so far, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I hope Aditya, you got your answer. Thank you so much, Arun. Uh, yeah, Harish, you can go next. Hi. Uh, 
so I just started this course. So my question would be what I hear from the people's doubt, right? Uh, so my question is regarding to uh, this entanglement. Uh, so as I read about photon, it has three state, right? Zero, one, and both. So if you entangle two photons, don't you lose the state which two individual photon provides? That is a six states possibility from the six state to the two states. So what the benefit you get out of entanglement? And the second question is. Who does entanglement and why it happens? Um, um, so first of all, uh, photon have many states, like not only three. All right, it has many states. So zero and one are orthogonal states. An orthogonal means you can distinguish them by experiments. Right. But uh, there can any linear combination of uh, these uh, which is normalized uh, is a state so there are infinitely many states in fact block sphere any point on or inside the block sphere represent a valid state of a photon right so it is infinitely many states uh, a single photon has right so this is the first thing and uh, now what was the entanglement you asked them yeah all right uh, let me repeat so um so when you do entanglement, don't you lose, you said photon has many states. Now if you do entanglement, you have, you, you explain head head or tail tail. So don't you lose all those states by doing entanglement? Uh, I mean, entanglement, losing state uh, is not very clear. I mean, like entanglement basically means is your state is uh, your information. Uh, you know, like you have information that you prepare horizontally horizontally polarized photons so that is your state uh, of uh, that is your in information i mean your information about the system is the state basically and uh, so when you process it you change the state basically when you do the entanglement right so uh, not losing the state changing the state yeah it will not be like of course like when you have input uh, uh, function x and then you apply uh, input uh, variable x you apply function f you get a y uh, so uh, x change into y so uh, i mean it's it's not very uh, uh, precise when you say we lose x and we gain y yeah of course you can say that but you no know, like it's basically the transformation you change x into y of course, when you change, then X is no more there. I mean, initial state is no more there. It is changed into something, some other state. Yes, during entanglement. Yeah, all right, thanks. Uh, so next question is, who does entanglement? Is it like system? You said you do. Uh, I want to know who is you. Yeah, here. so there is an apparatus which you can do entanglement. And uh, if you search BB, uh, you know, parametric down conversion. Mm -hmm. So this is a experiment where you entangle two photons. You, uh, this is a crystal, uh, by represent crystal. You sign a very strong laser uh, light on it, and then as a result, this this uh, single, uh, then it comes out two photons and which are entangled. All right, all right, fine. Thanks. Uh, so I just maybe uh, put a. Uh, uh, you know, like a link, if I see uh, Wikipedia link in the chat box, uh, you can click and then you will know the experimental. But this is experimental procedure particular to photon, but uh, you can do uh, uh, between qubits, which are based on superconductivity, uh, you can, uh, there is another proce procedure to make them entangle. In case of atom, there is a cold collision which make them entangle. So there are experimental pro procedure depending upon the physical system you have. If you are making quantum computer based upon cold atom, you use cold collision. If you are using uh, uh, based upon photon, like company like Janato and they are doing, so they use such kind of non-linear crystal to generate entangled pair of photons. Also in quantum communication is very common. So you can look at this one and then you will know that this is an experimental procedure how to generate a pair of entangled photons. Hmm. All right. Thanks. I'll go through this thing. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Arun and Harish. Uh, next question, please. Also, you can write in the chat as well. Yeah, Rakesh, please go ahead. Like so, one wow. can. Uh, Induce quantum entanglement between two particles. As I told you, in okay. case of cold collision, so you bring two two atom together, and by using those cold collision, you uh, make them entangled. So if you are bringing two uh, uh, atoms, and you can make them entangled, uh, that is one possibility in that particular experiment. I think I can also try to find a cold, cold, cold fusion, cold collision. But in oh. other, uh, for example, in television refrigerator, it's okay. But in semiconductor and other ion traps, uh, uh, or even you know, like uh, using NMR for doing this, uh, how how do you uh, achieve this? So I, I think there are uh, different experimental procedure. Uh, I mean, there are certain procedure for one. If you are do dealing with the NMR systems, so uh, sometimes like uh, two atoms are already in entangled state. Like uh, uh, when you take uh, when some carbon and hydrogen atoms are already, if you talk, take them as a two qubits and they are already in entangled state because uh, so there are things like that. But I have uh, what are uh, different procedure for different atoms. So in case of um, uh, Two quantum dots uh, in semiconductors, so there are procedures. But I don't want to say something wrong. I have to check precisely what, uh, how they do it. Then I can tell you. Maybe uh, I can post uh, here uh, one of the huge. I mean, one of the experimental techniques to generate entanglement. Uh, hi Arun, it's uh, Rakesh. Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I have uh, one question regarding the basic quantum computing process. Uh, as I am going through this course, uh, so uh, there is an experiment, a slit, uh, a slit experiment, where uh, the full light light is passed through a slit. Okay, mm -hmm. and based, based on that, uh, you get uh, the signal whether it's 0, 1 or in between mm -hmm. that, uh, between mm -hmm. 0, 1. So I would, just, I would just like to know, because this is a very basic experiment and this is the base for the quantum computing, how this mm -hmm. uh, thing applies in the actual quantum computing? Means, uh, so, uh, yeah, so it is, you know, like uh, how you define a two level. Two level basically, uh, particle goes to upper slit, you call it zero. It is a depend upon the path. Path is basically level here. So, this uh, such kind of qubit is called path qubit. So, this is a single qubit two level system because there are two slits, so it's a two level system. So, uh, if uh, your particle take upper path goes to the upper slit, it is equal to zero. If it take lower path, it goes from the lower slit, you call it one, right? So, this is a double slit experiment and path are associated with the you know, different state of a qubit. So, you can use the same setting uh, where you use a beam splitter. Suppose a sequence of a beam of photon is coming up and you have a beam splitter and beam splitter is basically uh, a, a mirror uh, you know like a, a, a not mirror semi silver mirror like for example if you uh, go for go in shopping mall right and you see there is a glass wall right? glass door or glass wall you take it so that's a glass slab right you can also look what is inside that room because there is a glass door right but you can also look yourself your image also so means some light which is coming from you is passing through therefore you can see um, uh, you know object inside the room and some uh, uh, rays are reflecting back therefore you can see your image so basically the, the the light is divided into two parts some pass through some reflect so this is also beam splitter so such kind of beam splitter you can use and it's basically which pass through you call it a zero it is equivalent to going through the upper slit and which reflect you call it one which is equivalent to going through the down slit so such kind of a, a beam splitter people use uh, in in photonics computation in in uh, you know based upon the lights uh, uh, so they uh, generate such kind of experimental splitter 
So quantum computer works basically on photons. Is uh, how you use yeah, yeah. signals for photons. Uh, there are different uh, systems. Like for example, uh, IBM is developing quantum computer based upon uh, superconductivity, uh, superconducting qubits, uh, which is basically each qubit is a LC circuit, and they are interacting with the coupler. Uh, so entanglement is generated with the coupler. So there is another uh, companies which make uh, using cold atoms. So they use cold atoms uh, in a rubidium, a rubidium atoms in a trap uh, with lasers uh, in a trap, and then uh, they manipulate their state by using lasers. So there is another is a semiconductor uh, approach where you um, you have. Uh, you know, in the last part of the course, you will uh, understand uh, learn these two uh, last two chapters. We devote one for semi uh, hardware based upon semiconductors, one uh, hardware based upon uh, uh, superconductors. So we will have all the details there in the on those chapters in the last seven and eight, I guess. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Arun. Yeah. So these uh, uh, quantum computers can give you know the highest coherence things like between the qubits uh no i mean uh, so uh, w w what do you mean by coherence time you said coherence time. yes yeah i mean uh, so you are comparing with what i mean when you are saying higher no, like, uh, like, uh, like how is the coherence times me measured and across the several architectures, now like you have the ion traps, semiconducting, semiconductor. So uh, how the coherence time varies? So exact number I don't know. Uh, um, uh, I have to find out those numbers. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, some uh, some uh, you know some systems which don't interact with the environment a lot, they have larger coherence time. For example, photon. Photon have no charge. So clearly they have no electromagnetic interaction with the outside world. So they don't lose information, which basically means coherence. Losing information, losing your state uh, and turning into mixture. I mean, because of noise and noise comes because you interact. Right? So uh, photon have the highest coherence time. But if you don't interact, how you try? Uh, uh, change, uh, transfer information from one photon to another. So there is another kind of problem there. Coherence is good, but uh, information transfer is uh, not possible if you don't interact. So there is always a trade-off. Right? If you don't interact, you can store the information for a long time, but uh, you cannot transfer. Transfer. So you also want to transfer. You also want to process the information. Uh, so. Therefore, photons are very good for communications because they can uh, st they don't be cohere and they can go long distance. If you want to send uh, uh, information by storing it in a state of a atom and send the atom, then uh, you will not be very successful because of the coherence and atom have charge. Even neutral atoms are good because why neutral is so much uh, important because they have zero charge and uh, neutral atom don't interact, but there are another kind of setups where you use ions. Ions have charge, so it's good to very good uh, uh, for processing the information because they can interact. But uh, storing information is bad, so people use different kind of things. Storing information, they use photons and communication photons, and processing, they use different things. So similarly, there is a uh, decoherence time in case of uh, superconductive qubits. Thank you so much, Arun. I'm, I would like to request everyone, please raise your hand before asking the question. So, Pawan, uh, you can go next. Yes, sir. Uh, so, my doubt is uh, if Alice and Bob states are entangled and uh, if we involve a third person, uh, let us call Charles, and Ch Charles know the uh, result of the measurement of Bob, sir, if Bob measured this photon and Alice, uh, Charles know the result. So, according to me, in my perspective, even Charles is entangled with two of them, like uh, Bob and 
yeah so uh, it is there is a very fundamental things which we call monogamy of entanglement right so which basically means is uh, if you entangle two party the entanglement is very very strong if you include one more party the entanglement get weak and once the entanglement get weak then it will not violate bell inequality and then you can detect the presence of uh, charlie right so yes. what, what what is the detect what is the hacker do right so hacker hack your password and read your email right but the main trick is that they don't get detected you don't know that my email is hacked but once you know that my email is hacked you will change the password immediately you will stop the communication basically means changing the password right so they are reading your email without being detected so once they get detected their game is over so that's what uh, entanglement provide you if some third party get entangled with your communication channel their entang the entanglement in whole channel the three party channel get decrease and it will not violate bell inequality hence you will say my channel is not secure because violation of bell inequality is a guarantee that your channel is secure nobody get entangled with your channel right so once bell inequality is not violated you will change the password that's it okay yes sir and also like uh... I actually I recently watched a video regarding uh, 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 regarding Schmidt decomposition of bipartite states, sir. So can you can you explain the use of it, sir? Like why do we use? Uh, Schmidt decompositions is uh, very nice uh, in many respects. Schmidt decomposition is also uh, come from linear algebra. It is not from quantum mechanics. I mean, such kind of uh, things exist, and uh, now you find they use in quantum mechanics or quantum information. Uh, so uh, l let me first uh, put this uh, monogamy of entanglement uh, in the chat, the Wikipedia article, if you want to read it further. Now, uh, coming back to the Smith decomposition. Smith decomposition, you can, uh, if you write them, it, the state, uh, you know, re uh, become very simple. You know, like. Uh, it have only two terms in case of uh, uh, two qubit states. Otherwise, in general, two qubit state have four terms: zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Right? Yes. So, is the structure become very simple? Second, uh, Smith decomposition tells you a lot about entanglement. If you have more than, uh, if you have two Smith com component, if you have two terms, which is Smith coefficient, number of non-zero terms, uh, then it is entangled. And Smith uh, coefficient will also tell you amount of the entanglement in two body system. This is, you know, uh, related to the two body system. But also there is a whole, uh, in case of many body system, you have, uh, you know, if you want to write a full state vector for n qubit, it is a two raised to power n component, right? But by applying Smith decomposition, Smith decomposition, you can get a simplified version. And uh, there is a whole, uh, uh, literature or whole field uh, based upon matrix product state, right? Which is purely based upon applying Smith decompositions recursively. And uh, with matrix product state, uh, which is a simple version of, uh, it is the approximate version of uh, whole n qubit state, and you can study many things. So, tensor product state, uh, matrix product state, so Smith, they are based upon Smith decomposition, basically, what I want to say. It's very useful. Okay, sir. sir, and my final question, like uh, coming back to that uh, entanglement one. So, like, uh, for example, if Bob had told the result to Charles, is it similar to Charles eavesdropping on quantum channel? Like, are they are the both scenarios the same or else? Like, because at the end, uh, like, three will be entangled according to me, right? So, what she do is because the answer is uh, they, they, they will not be, um, you know, uh, exactly same because uh, uh, in I don't remember exactly, but uh, I, I think in part of the protocol, Bob uh, in the end uh, after performing measurement announce uh, the results, right? Yes. Both of them announce the result, but they don't announce the measurement basically, something like that. 
so i think it's little different yeah all okay. right hello sir yes sir so actually he can quantum superposition and the quantum entanglement can occur at the same time concurrently actually quantum entanglement is due to superposition right quantum entanglement itself is due to superposition yes exactly so when you see the bell inequality bell state let's say 0 0 plus 1 1 under the root 2 divided by under root 2 right so this is a superposition of 0 0 and 1 1 state so entanglement when you see it it is a superposition uh uh and you also have subsystems there right so if i say zero state plus one state there is no subsystem it is just superposition when you have a zero zero plus one one state you have a superposition but also you have subsystem so you are individually looking subsystem so entanglement uh, it is very important that there are subsystems right otherwise uh, you will say uh, a single qubit a state is entangled with what i mean it is just one qubit so at least there has to be two subsystems uh, between which you can say there is entanglement if there is only one system you cannot uh, see the subsystem Uh, so uh, there is no entanglement right? like for example three level system is a is called qubit but three is a prime number you cannot factorize it you cannot write as a product of two uh, no uh, integers positive integers i mean you cannot think as, you cannot find a subsystem there any prime number in fact let's say seven what is the subsystem seven dimension cannot be divided into two Now dimension two product of two numbers, right? D one, D two. So there, is, there must be subsystem in order to uh, say something about entanglement, right? Otherwise, superposition is there in both the cases. Yeah. Uh, so next can go. I think. yeah thank you so much arun and shahul i uh, shahul i hope your doubts are cleared now anyone who would like to go next uh you can ask your questions related to ai as well we have ai expert as well here actually i have enrolled in uh, uh, aws bracket a quantum expert with the aws bracket um, so like uh, still that uh, uh, tutorials uh, for that uh, you know aws bracket uh, i think it's not complete only like a few sections it has okay uh, thank you so much shahul for bringing this to our notice and definitely i'll connect with you regarding this and uh, also i'll communicate the same with the team as well and i would request you if you can send us the screenshot regarding that on our support mail id okay sure i would like to add that uh, tutorials in the beginning section of the course have been added uh, to the overall uh, course content and as you progress through the course the tutorials for more advanced sections are coming up in fact uh, Out of sixteen to seventeen uh, uh, predetermined tutorials, around twelve have been uploaded. Uh, you can confirm if uh, there is an issue in viewing the. So, how many tutorials are you able to view? Hello. Now. Yeah. Yeah. How many tutorials are you able to access as of now? No, actually, like uh, that AWS, uh, except for that, uh, how to install that AWS uh, uh, in the installation of the SDK, AWS SDK. Uh, other than that, the you know, like uh, there are no. Uh, I was told that there will be like this IP IPYNB files will be included in every every chapter, uh, so that we can practice the AWS bracket uh, tutorial for that chapter. 
so either uh, you can check once again or i can connect with you offline to look into the issue we have uploaded tutorials for 10 to 12 different chapters okay uh, i mean to say like as the course goes on like it will be updated further right yes absolutely okay Uh, so any more question anyone and I also uploaded one link in the chat that is related to feedback form so those who have already asked their questions they can at least fill the feedback form link and it is very important for us your feedback is really really valuable for us so please don't miss out on that yeah Harish you can go next yep, thanks uh, so this my this question is not yet in you know not in the um, study i'm asking as a layman when we use quantum computers and assume that computers are connected to each other uh, in our classic networking we have a collusion of the bits so i expect collusion will happen in uh, standard quantum networking as well like photon um, colliding with each other, each other and you losing the you know data how do you uh, i mean basically when you design a comp uh, quantum computer it's not a single computer right you ultimately goal is you have many com uh, computer computers talking to each other so how this networking is achieved and the problems which we faced in classical networking which solved now are you approaching how you are approaching uh, you know solution of those problems in the quantum network so uh, just uh, let's understand one thing uh, so when you prepare a state right it's again same preparation operation measurement so when you give a preparation prepare a state let's say i want to prepare a state uh, spin up in that direction so that is a classical information so classical information goes inside the quantum computer and then you you want to say that you want to apply unitary operation which is a rotation around let's say y axis phi angle theta so x is y angle theta is also classical information which goes into the quantum and then you say oh, i want to perform measurement in z basis that also goes into quantum computer and in the end this is the whole classical info information information about the experiment you want to run and whole experiment is defined by the preparation uh, operation which is evolution and the measurement and all these are classical information and in the end you will get a counts measurement counts output that will be also classical right so whatever goes inside the quantum computer is classical information whatever comes out is also classical information in in the quantum computer quantum information stays so whatever going inside and outside is classical information your normal information so if you want to protect then information you can use uh, usual classical protocol but in inside uh, quantum if you want to protect information basically you have to fight with the decoherence people do different things uh, error correction error mitigation and things like that and design a better hardware and uh, cool it down at the proper temperature have, i mean you see the quantum computer is a very big setup is to work on very low temperature in case of superconductive qubits uh, the wire of are of special kind all these whole big setup is just to kill the noise Right? You see the quantum chip is very very small and this whole architecture is just to save it from the decoherence. So uh, information outside of quantum computer you can use your normal uh, uh, techniques uh, which you use uh, for, uh, for uh, your other data task because inside uh, uh, the data is classical outside of quantum all right so you are saying quantum computers are not talking to each other if they have to talk it has to go via the classical network which we have which is available today yes yes, yes. all right so in that case uh, so what benefit the quantum computer use when ultimately i have to use classic network in between so look i'm talking from this perspective 
uh, today we have 5G and our bandwidth so the benefit is simple mm-hmm. because you want to get a benefit uh, because you want to do computation not with one CPU but many many CPUs which is GPU but not with one GPU but many many GPUs right mm-hmm. but all these you can do by combining one CPU with another by combining one GPU with another but all these architecture you can complete it with one quantum computer all right all right so you I mean, you don't need to combine this. Why you need to combine? Because uh, you uh, you cannot do without combining uh, GPUs, without combining CPUs. I mean, w- what basically GPU is, is a combination of thousand CPUs, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, you don't need a thousand different uh, units. You just need one quantum computer. Yep. All right. I got, got the answer. Thanks. I like uh, the cooling, uh, like for example, in this uh, superconducting uh, uh, quantum computers, uh, where you know the chips are cooled to absolute zero, almost absolute zero, yeah. is the purpose solely to uh, preserve the coherence between the qubits, exactly. or is there any other? Uh, exactly, that's it. And also, you know, like a superconductivity comes into the picture at the low temperature. We don't have a high temperature superconductors which work on the normal pressure. So also superconductivity is an important part there. So which uh, for which you also need a low temperature. Yeah, Pang. Now you can go next. Thank you so much, Arun and Shahul. Can you please uh, uh, give me a few moments? I'm, I'm actually listing down my uh, question. So if someone is there, I can can join next. All right, Pankaj. No issues. I mean, you, you can speak and tell uh, your question. I mean, there is no need to type and, I mean, you can just speak like whatever is in your mind and then you can tell. Yeah, Ram, when you can go ahead. Okay, uh, this is uh, a, a lemon question again from my end as well. Uh, so the query is, in a multi-bit uh, uh, qubit uh, quantum computer, let's say it's a 4-bit or uh, you know 8-bit uh, quantum computer, are all of the qubits uh, uh, entangled with each other, so to speak? That can you please repeat? Oh, can you please so the, repeat? Yeah, so the question is, uh, in, in a multi-qubit uh, quantum computer, let's say it's an eight-qubit uh, quantum computer, because uh, if I see online, uh, I believe uh, you know, there are uh, IBM in, uh, to, uh, to specify any uh, a specific uh, you know, brand has uh, up to 127-bit uh, quantum computer. So, and there are a few other, uh, you know, I believe they've, uh, they've made it free for a uh, five-bit quantum computer up to five bits. So, the question was, uh, let's say I want to try out short algorithm. And so, uh, so the, that was the context. So, in the same lines, the first question is, if I go for a multi-qubit quantum system or a computer, are all of the, is it the case, is it mandatory that all of them have to be entangled with each other or they do they, or do we use them independently or does it depend on the nature of the algorithm? Yeah, you can, if you want to apply uh, single qubit operation, it will talk to only single qubit. If you want to apply two qubit operation, it will talk to these two. Okay, so if, if I, if my algorithm requires all the bits, I can still go ahead and 
use all the all the bits. Otherwise, you can use only one of them, whichever is necessary. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, you can use all the bits. Okay, and does uh, from the Schwarz algorithm context, uh, uh, is it necessary that all of the, if, if I want to solve for, uh, let's say, uh, a 50, uh, let's say I, I have, uh, uh, in, in particular, uh, numeric, you know, number factorization. So, let's say I have two prime numbers, uh, uh, let's say it's uh, 5 and 11, 55. So, if I take a 55 bit quantum uh, computer, I should be able to, uh, you know, uh, factorize uh, it back into five and eleven using shorts, right? So you don't need fifty-five uh, for that. You just have to binary uh, take a binary representation of fifty-five, which you need. Uh, it is less than sixty-four. Uh, Eight basically means uh, five. Uh, no, six. Uh, six qubits. Okay. Okay. So yeah, six. Okay. Four. Uh, okay. For numbers such as uh, 55 unit uh, 6 cube. Got it. It's a log 2. Got it. Uh, so now. Uh... Yeah. Uh, okay. And. So in this case, all of them uh, would be in the integral state? Like, is it. Can I mean, we... it's, it's depend upon your algorithm. So your in algorithm shots, have certain. Yeah. So your algorithm have certain uh, operations which make them entangled, right? Okay, so it is the algorithm that renders, uh, you know, th that initiate or uh, that results in an entanglement among all the qubits. Yeah. So your algorithm is you prepare in initial state, then you run certain operations. These are usually these two qubit operations make them entangled. Okay. And your operations, uh, two qubit operation is determined by the algorithm you want to run, right? Remember your shore operations or show, uh, all the operators, uh, uh, you know, the control U operators, they depend upon uh, uh, your algorithm. So in Grover, there will be different kind of operations, right? I need to look that up, but uh, yeah, thanks. I just had some very basic uh, questions and then uh, I'll get back to you later. Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ravindra and Adon. Uh, I hope, Ravindra, your all doubts are cleared now. And uh, uh, anyone who would like to go next? Yeah, Shahul, please. Yeah. Actually, like, uh, uh, um, this uh, non-locality, how it can be explained? Like we we're talking about this Bell's inequality, we talk about non-locality and this uh, entanglement. Non-locality simply means like uh, if you have uh, operations, uh, if you 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 share entangled state, like uh, if uh, let's say uh, I'm in Bangalore and maybe you are in Delhi and uh, you have a source which produce a pair of entangled photons, one comes to me, another comes to you. We are at different global positions, right? But whenever I perform measurement, it ch change the state, global state. I mean, we, I mean, there is no local state here. So, uh, so it uh, it has a effect on on your measurement outcomes. Okay. So we are not local. We are not together. We are not at the one particular place. We are at different places. So it is known local. Local means like if you are in Bangalore also, or to be precise, very close to me. I mean, uh, uh, so uh, my, the, the, the basis I choose to perform measurement have an effect on your outcomes. If we share entanglement pair, and that is no local effect. I am doing something here locally, which have effect on uh, your uh, uh, on, on your side. So it is a no local. Okay. Like, uh, uh, what preserves this uh, entanglement? Like, how, uh, how come this uh, long-range uh, qubit interaction is possible? Because in between them, there is so much uh, other uh, disturbances, environment. So, without getting entangled into the environment, how actually these two particles uh, remain connected? I mean, entangled. This I don't know. What is uh, much more fundamental than that? I mean, like, 
what is the mechanism i don't know actually i don't know this answer is uh, this question is not answer i guess uh, i mean uh, to the best of my knowledge i think is not uh, uh, you know like uh, the what are the fundamental mechanism you are asking like there should be something more fundamental than quantum mechanics but i is not very clear to me i mean the uh, entanglement or this kind of property are fundamental but what causes entanglement it is even much more you know like uh, the answer the, the question is may not be answered i don't know i don't know the answer or i am also don't know that whether such answer exists in the world I mean, people know it or not Uh, okay uh, so pankaj are you done with your questions can you proceed oh uh, yes uh, so uh, thanks uh, so actually uh, i have actually a set of questions maybe seven to it and uh, so uh, first thing is actually uh, about the uh, linear algebra ass assessment uh, first question so actually identify set of linearly independent vectors So as per my calculation, actually uh, the three out of the four uh, choices, three are uh, linearly independent and one is linearly dependent. So should the question be reversed? And uh, I'm not sure about that. But as per my uh, calculation, out of four, a uh, three are linearly independent set of uh, vectors. Uh, so maybe you, why don't you send an email? I mean, as uh, okay. You know, it is given, and they also send you a solution. You don't have to type; you just take a photo and attach with it. Okay. Maybe you have written on a piece of paper and pen, and just take a photo of that. This is my solution, and can you please look at it where I have done mistake or where uh, you uh, there might be a mistake in the question. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, second question is actually if I am um, familiar with some of the. Uh, Prerequisites or some material, for example, a linear algebra and so on. Uh, so actually, is it okay uh, if I only solve the final assessment and uh, skip the uh, lectures, or means I will go through the important lectures? But some of the lectures, if I skip, is it okay, or uh, will it affect the uh, final grade or something? No, no. I think you don't need to watch lectures. If you can solve the assignment questions, it will be great. Okay. Uh, then, then you can fast forward to, I guess, uh, final. Exam. I mean, please correct me if I'm uh, wrong. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm asking my team. Yeah, I don't. Uh, just a second. just a second. Uh, yeah, Pankaj. So you have to watch each and every video. Maybe yeah, you can increase the speed like 1.25x or 1.5x. But yeah, you have to give all the assessments. You have to complete all the quizzes, and then only you can go to the final exam. Because then only we'll able to release your certificate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so actually, okay. another. If you want to skip a particular video, uh, you think you know the topic that is being discussed in the video. There is a button called as "Mark as Complete." You can mark that particular video as complete. But uh, quiz submission and assignment submission is mandatory. Okay. Thanks. so my actually next is next a uh, question is actually uh, like these are some of the general uh, questions uh, so next thing is like uh, means the course material has explained uh, all the uh, concepts and the uh, theoretical details were and some uh, hands on sessions are also there but what about uh, actual hands on with the frameworks like pytorch or tensorflow and doing a good project Which involves end-to-end -end life cycle of AI ML project. Similarly, for quantum technology, so which which actually we can complete as a part of this course project and which can be a valuable addition to our resume and we can put it onto something like a GitHub or somewhere where we can showcase our skills. That is also I think equally important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. so uh, i'll add uh, to answer for this question so uh, when you progress in your course uh, you will be seeing that there are uh, some projects related to pytorch and uh, you know the uh, practical applications of that uh, you will definitely be able to do that 
and uh, we also have like say for example we'll also keep on updating more and more problem statements or reference for you to work on and uh, you can actually upload those kind of projects you can modify uh, whatever project explanation or project solution we have given to you you can experiment with other algorithms or hyper parameters or other things and you can upload that to github as well okay that is that will be true for machine learning or other uh, topics also okay yeah okay so uh, next uh, next actually means i have actually uh, three or four more uh, questions so i hope it, it, is it okay to discuss sure sir sure, go ahead uh, okay so actually uh, see actually uh, i just also want to know is that where there will be any future additions uh, to the course for example new um, material on uh, generative ai which is a hot topic or graph neural networks is it planned and actually uh, suppose means when my i have actually enrolled for say one year and um, by the time suppose if you upload the uh, course material after after uh, everything is finished from my end and if i finish the course and obtain the certificate and if you add new material so will it be ha having free access for me and then or uh, should i take uh, again some uh, subscription and uh, some new material are you planning to add on these uh okay. like uh, yeah, right right it understood your question so uh pankaj if you can do one thing uh you can also write this to support uh we'll come up with a like uh, you know the framework for this thing because there is a lot of content that is uh you know being updated and there will be a lot of changes around that because of the lang change the native way and all those models so we'll definitely get back to you with a concrete uh, answer from the administrative team as well but you know what is the take on that okay thanks so uh, next next actually a question is that like uh, i have work in 5, 5g wireless and uh, so the next upcoming this thing is logical development is 6g and so on so actually people are talking a lot about uh, use of quantum in 6g and so on so like how it can be used or how it can be applicable for future 6g system so one aspect is like security is there but can it be used for some other aspects like a uh, spectrum management or uh, management of the uh, massive mimo uh, or uh, like something like that or uh, means how how actually it can be used in a, a future 6g systems I take up this question. Uh, particularly, there is a application of quantum computing to many optimization routines and optimization protocols. Okay, so for example, it could be higher order optimization or quadratic optimization. And spectrum management, if you see, it's, uh, it's the optimal allocation of different bands to our channel. So that. can be framed as a quadratic optimization problem and that can be solved using techniques that are present in quantum computing and also classical computing okay so that is one area of application second is uh, let's talk about the mimo channels so there is this operation of decoding the signals right and that is quite similar to identifying the bit based errors in uh, decoding yeah again it's a selection problem okay and to select that particular bit or to not select that particular bit with respect to other parameters that are present in the signal that is uh, that can again be framed as a quadratic optimization problem it can be solved using quantum computing and when we say that it can be solved there are multiple techniques are already available in classical computing like uh, Uh, local search like taboo search simulated and so on and so forth then within quantum computing there can be applications of the approximate optimization algorithms to solve this particular problem uh, like uh, qaoa and there are set of other techniques that are based on the icing representation of the same problem. and it uses some new techniques that come out of quantum computing that is uh, quantum inspired techniques Uh, this is uh, where the part of optimization comes in similarly there are certain uh, directions in which the scientific community or the engineering community is exploring 
use of uh, machine learning accelerated by quantum computing to apply in uh, telecommunication networks like uh, things like uh, RAN planes and uh, analysis uh, over uh, multi-dimensional telecom data. That is another direction. And the third direction uh, directly comes from uh, communication itself. It's not directly related to 6G because 5G, 6G, these are nothing uh, but uh, different standards and uh, upgradations of uh, protocols by which the communication happens. But uh, much more fundamentally, uh, sooner or later, we are seeing that the community is transitioning towards hybrid uh, quantum classical networks and then later to quantum secure networks. And uh, many organizations are building these capabilities within uh, uh, their own communication channels. Like for example, Vodafone has recently uh, uh, recently set up a quantum network. Similarly, uh, we had that was done with the collaboration with EY, if I'm not wrong. And uh, similarly, many uh, telecommunication companies like uh, Broadcom are also experimenting on the same lines. So. This is how uh, quantum computing could be, in principle, applied to uh, this different kinds of problems. Okay. Uh, so, uh, next, next, actually, uh, thing is actually like about the uh, planning, uh, and then uh, how how I need to uh, spend the time uh, in in actually a uh, particular uh, modular assignment to have actually a balance between uh, like good amount of learning and uh, ensuring that I am not wasting uh, too much time in a uh, modular assignments because for some of the assignments actually I feel that I am spending a lot of time and then still uh, sometimes uh, like uh, means I am not able to solve or like uh, for example uh, the, uh, the linear algebra linear related thing that I mentioned so it, it took me around for example say 35 minutes to work out the four uh, means uh, answer choices so this is I think I'm taking a lot of time than expected so <laughs> some some tips can be actually can you give like how to optimize op optimize time or uh, means utilize it uh, in a in an efficient way for an effective learning and also problem solving Probably uh, Arpit could answer this question better than me. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So I'll, I'll take this question. <coughs> so, yeah, so there are two things. Uh, first is that uh, definitely when we start any course, uh, the, these kind of things uh, generally happen. Uh, just give me a moment. So one thing what you can do is you can arrange uh, this uh, mentorship session also uh, with uh, the quantum expert or the AI expert uh, and you can have a framework you know customized for you as into what kind of uh, progress you want and uh, I, what I would suggest is just uh, create a, some kind of uh, so like uh, if I can ask uh, how does your uh, schedule looks like how many uh, like how many number of hours can you spend is that thing. Uh -huh. I can spend uh, one hour uh, per day and okay. then in the weekend I can spend maybe a uh, total of five to six hours. Sure, sure, understood, understood. So yeah, definitely. So what you can do is uh, the weekend specifically you can keep for problem solving assignments and practice and that stuff. And uh, weekdays you can, uh, I'll, I'll prefer that uh, you, you know, uh, make down some, mark down some important things and take a bit of notes. So that will help you across weekend also and the best thing that i will really suggest is that to uh, utilize this mentorship session wherein we can dedicatedly work on the roadmap for you personally you know de depending on your uh, time constraints and schedule and your level of expertise with the ai or quantum uh, you know the subjects that you have enrolled in so like in order to in the interest of everybody's time uh, that would be a very good forum to discuss this in, at length Okay, okay, thanks. So, uh, actually, the last uh, question that I have, uh, like, 
I was actually also going through uh, the part of SVM and so on. So, is that uh, concept or module fully explained or some material still needs to be added? No, uh, SVM is uh, complete. Is there a like uh, you are facing a particular problem with? Let me know. I'll just check it uh, when we discuss. Like, why do you feel is it incomplete if I may ask it that way? I think there are only very few uh, models in that and then means I have not gone in much detail about that but okay okay maybe uh, maybe what can what can be an issue maybe some kind of back end issue because of which uh, you might not be able to see some of the lectures or something okay. like that uh, maybe you can uh, send us a screenshot and uh, I'll, what I'll uh, so see there are three four modules around SVM uh, from introduction to decision trees as well, linear, non-linear, how does these things work out? And yeah, if these are not available to you, we'll make sure that uh, these are available to you. So, okay, it's already uploaded. Okay, I will I will uh, take a, a screenshot and I will say. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, uh, thanks. So, I am uh, done from command. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pankaj and Arpad. I hope, Pankaj, you have got your answers of all your queries. And um, yeah, Afroz, you can go next. Yeah, my question is to Arun, sir. Actually, sometimes back he told that regarding entanglement uh, is the fundamentals. Yeah. It's like a, it cannot be like explained. Means it is there, it is there. Just wanted to know that. Uh, this, whether this is proved, means if it is proved, then is what is the distance of the this entanglement which is proved till now? So this was my question. No, so there is always uh, there is uh, always every question. I mean, always you can ask a question: Why electron have that much charge? Why not that much? So, uh, so. There is always, uh, you start with some axioms, fundamental observations. We measure electron have this charge, we measure electron from US, we measure electron from India, anywhere. Like the, always the charge is that much. So that is the electron fundamental property. So again, uh, what causes entanglement? Um, uh, the, the, the reason is because uh, they interact. Uh, the, the subsystem interacted in the past, uh, that is the reason. You know, without interaction, there cannot be entanglement. I mean, the, these two qubit gate uh, perform interaction uh, between two particles. But then if you ask, like, uh, why there is interaction? I mean, so you can ask every why, there is another why, and there is another why. And at some point, we have to stop that, uh, you know, like, uh, beyond that, we don't know. So you, you can always go like something like a uh, human body, what is made of atom, atom, what is it made of? Uh, then people done experiment or other code and then things is made of uh, electron proton. What electron proton made of? Uh, then people have done more experiment, large hydron collider and then things like that. They made of uh, this uh, even more uh, proton, uh, this uh, gluons, right? And then leptons and what these are, what these are made of, you know, like <laughs> then at some point you have to stop because uh, you yeah. have no technology to probe it further. Yeah, I, I got your point. My my question was like, uh, means this entanglement, like it might have been proved, right? Yes. If, if we, uh, I miss mean, to certain distance. So my question was this, means whether it is proved uh, to, and if it is proved, then till what distance it is proved? The distance is basically entanglement is just some quantum state right and yeah. uh, quantum state uh, loses coherence uh, because of decoherence you also lose the entanglement property like it get mixed with the uh, uh, noise right okay. uh, so then uh, you also lose your security mm -hmm. okay. uh, because entanglement is gone uh, then uh, security is also gone so therefore, people uh, use uh, 
not one entanglement pair but many entanglement pair for quantum communication so uh, there is a whole uh, technology is based upon that to increase the distance uh, so that entanglement survive so um, these are called uh, i forgot the name but uh, these are very famous for uh, propostria i forgot the name but they they, they basically uh, is very famous name but i forgot so these are the, there are that some technology which uh, enable that they survive for long distance uh, okay. so um i i forgot the name is very famous no, uh, no it's, it's it's totally fine just uh, miss my main interest was like miss you told like it is like uh, <coughs> proved for some distance so is what is the maximum distance means whether something it is like um, arun may i add to yeah uh, hi uh, hi afros so yeah i'll add to what the doctor arun pointed out so yeah. even with the physical infrastructures and experimental setups long distance entanglement has been demonstrated and uh, so for example what uh, dr arun is, arun is referring to that was shown on uh, fiber optics uh, based network not wrong and uh, recently 3 to 4 years ago a team from uh, china um, from one of the universities in china they demonstrated uh, a satellite based uh, uh, shared pair of uh, entangled photons so there were two ground stations and a satellite and uh, this has been demonstrated for almost like uh, 1200 kilometers or something like that. okay okay so so far to the best of my knowledge this is the uh, maximum distance on where uh, entanglement has been demonstrated physically and in principle it it can be like uh, any distance yeah 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 in principle it can be any distance okay thanks thanks a lot miss my question is answered I'll also again look into it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, you, you said so like uh, uh, even for entanglement, the uh, coherence is important, right? You are saying that uh, even to uh, yes, yes. Co- coherence is basically uh, surviving that superposition. Entanglement is okay. a subset of in superposition. In that case, in that case. In a, in a, in a, in a, in a, it's it's very difficult even in a quantum computer or multi qubit quantum computer to maintain coherence for long time uh, when they are close close in space. Then how come uh, you know like uh, such a long distance uh, entanglement is possible? As I told you, like Lakshya pointed out, that it depends upon the physical system. Photon don't interact, so you can easily uh, maintain coherence uh, with them, right? in comparison to atoms or ions right so uh, for communication purposes photon are the best uh, so and you use them uh, through uh, you know like open space uh, uh, you know like uh, you sign a laser from satellite you send uh, through the open space there are, and you can send them through the optical fiber so there are a lot of big big long distance experiments are conducted from china rri professor orvesh sina do such experiment uh, you know like in india brahma research institute i uh, rri means uh, so uh, so such kind of experiment are conducted in open space as well as uh, uh, with fibers and basically all these ex- uh, experiments are photon based because photon preserve longer coherent time oh matter sir Uh, thank you so much arun uh, shahul do you have any more questions as time goes i'll ask okay, others can ask now okay 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 yeah arun uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask your question hello my my question is on uh, from uh, benchmarking qubits during one of the benchmark uh, it is said like the transverse noise is also interacting with the environment what is been by exactly the transverse environment transverse noise we will be checking so 
basically these transverse noise uh, what they mean is uh, there are many kinds of disturbances uh, when we are setting up a qubit it has to be shielded in some environment okay and uh, there has to be no effect of external magnetic fields on those qubits uh, sometimes what happens is uh, the alignment between the qubits and uh, the external magnetic field is in such a direction that uh, it is uh, in the transverse direction and there is a decoupling based on that and that propagates as certain noise in uh, the overall qubit systems so that is uh, what this effect of external fields mean thank you lecture Actually, there are many uh, algorithms, quantum algorithms, uh, which are coming up, right? So, uh, is there anything that uh, this particular quantum algorithm is applicable only to this type of uh, quantum architecture? For example, these algorithms work well in uh, uh, superconducting uh, qubits, or uh, these algorithms work well in, you know, ion traps. Is that is it like that, or? Uh, So far, it would be too early to say. So essentially, the idea is that uh, both hardware and software technologies are very nascent with respect to quantum computing. And uh, ideally, what is done in if any new algorithm comes, it is benchmarked across different kinds of super uh, different kinds of hardware platforms. And it has been seen that. Uh, so let's say if the topology of uh, a quantum computer is such that there are more number of entangled uh, qubits okay so naturally the algorithms that utilize entanglement will uh, entang entanglement to a larger extent will perform better there uh, instead of running on a hardware platform where we have qubits that are far away so it's too early to have any conclusive answer according uh, related to that and what we understand is uh, it will not be true uh, because uh, the, what the community is also transitioning towards is sort of hybrid architectures where uh, let's say there are parts or segments of an algorithm that are suited for a particular hardware platform so those pieces of algorithm are executed on that particular platform similarly if let's say if a particular algorithm has a, a very deep circuit so which is the best platform offering uh, that kind of depth of execution but it's too early to say i got it uh thank you so much lakshay uh, yeah uh harish you can unmute yourself you can go next yes so uh, my question regarding to second last uh, discussion where luxa said that from ground station to the satellite we sent uh, some some photons how how could it be possible isn't it lost in climate we, we can't do that with, with the traditional frequency as well like the dtf itself get disturbed if there is a rain so how did this happen it's a very good question and it is one of the biggest challenges with the satellite based quantum communication because the environment is quite unpredictable and uh, all these communication happens at the level of single photons so there are specialized equipments and specialized uh, uh, i i would say uh, beam generators that enable this kind of transmission but it's not an easy challenge it's one of the uh, most difficult challenges It's so like engineering problems here is that how far we can distribute such protons, so that we can persist uh, uh, their coherence. All right. It's like visualizing the star. Mm. yeah so i i hope harish you got your answer thank you so much for uh, uh, lakshay any other question please uh okay if we do yeah, uh, 
All right, Hemant. Yeah, you can go ahead. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Hemant. Yeah. Oh, okay, I I I just had uh, uh, some uh, doubts regarding a project that I was working on. Uh, it was on uh, quantum uh, algorithms. I, I was working on uh, uh, an uh, algorithm that uh, tries to solve uh, genetic uh, inheritance uh, uh, by analyzing a pedigree chart. So I wanted to know whether what I was doing was a, a legit use of the quantum principles or uh, was it an abuse of it. Sorry, I could not understand your question. Uh, could you please repeat? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what I was trying to do was uh, I, I was uh, working on a project. Uh, the project is basically me attempting to try to solve a, a pedigree chart, uh, which is used in genetic uh, inheritance. So I wanted to know whether the project that I was working on was a legit use of the uh, quantum principles or uh, am I mistaken in my uh, use of it? So, uh, how do you frame a quantum algorithm to sort, uh, you know, a tree kind of a structure? Well, uh, well, what I did was uh, I, I I represented uh, each uh, each individual in the pedigree chart as a qubit, and, and then uh, uh, they are uh, you know initialize them with uh, with any gate that would show me the uh, show the um, particular uh, phenotype, whether whether uh, if the person has an affected or non-affected or uh, whether they are heterogamous or uh, homogamous to it by using uh, X gates uh, and uh, Hadamard gates. So I created, uh, you know, wh whenever somebody is a heterogamous to a phenotype, I would create a superposition and then I would uh, have a entanglement uh, uh, depicting their relationship to each other. This way I try to, you know, uh, create a cascading uh, uh, entanglement of superpositions. So, uh, how are you encoding this information? Like, what do the gates stand for and what do the qubits stand for? Like, how are you, like, how many qubits will that require given a particular depth of a tree? Well, well, I can, uh, I can, I can uh, show you the, uh, uh, you know, the core or uh, I can uh, show you the, uh, graph, uh, circuit diagram from uh, Qiskit. I, I have done it on Qiskit. Okay, then in that case, uh, we can connect offline and discuss. And oh. uh, to what I would suggest is these kind of, if we want to construct a tree with respect to, you know, if we want to encode a tree into a quantum circuit, uh, one of the things that we have observed is we will require uh, the circuit depth to be equivalent to the height of a tree okay that is one scheme of encoding and so that does not give a, a very powerful advantage in doing so we can still do it better with uh, traditional techniques this is something that we have observed while working on our problems but i'm not sure what exactly your problem is probably you can write to me or uh, write to the team and uh, share your code and uh, we can advise you uh, relate, uh, related to that. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. That would be really, really useful for me. Yeah, thank you, Hemant. You can write mail to support at the rate qpyai.tech. You can find the mail ID in the chat. And actually, I, I hope uh, your queries have been answered. Actually, I am uh, uh, quite new to this uh, quantum computing, but uh, I just came across one paper where, you know, like this uh, uh, recently mRNA design has become, uh, you know, uh, more uh, uh, more hot field because of this COVID, this mRNA vaccines and other mRNA therapeutics are coming. Now, this uh, optimization of the mRNA sequence, uh, you know, to design those uh, vaccines and therapeutics, is a very interesting research area. I, so I, I came across some paper also uh, where they have been uh, trying to use quantum computers, quantum computing for uh, optimizing uh, the mRNA sequence. Now, uh, this combinatorial, actually because the mRNA sequence, right? This combinatorial optimization 
involves something called uh, quantum annealing can you explain this quantum annealing and uh, how it can be like used in optimization uh, okay so uh, probably the work that you are referring to is uh, the mrna sequence reconstruction that was that came around 2 to 3 years ago if i'm not wrong so uh, that paper used the setup uh, for uh, binary optimization and the quantum computers that were used for doing that particular optimization were quantum annealers so the concept behind quantum annealing is that let's say we have a optimization combinatorial optimization problem we map this combinatorial optimization problem to the state of our quantum system okay and this state of uh, quantum system is prepared on machines that are called quantum annealers and these quantum annealers have certain specific properties one of the properties is that uh, this uh, so from going from the initial state to the final state this evolution happens adiabatically so that is an adiabatic process and uh, based on certain fundamentals of quantum mechanics what happens is uh, if we start this particular system in its uh, ground state if we find a way to encode our uh cost function into the ground state of our uh, uh annealing the system usually it's it's a hamiltonian so what happens is as the evolution happens adiabatically this uh, the final state is again a ground state okay and that final state encodes a solution to our optimization problem so we vary the uh, Uh, those uh, parameters in our annealing schedule such that uh, we are able to achieve this uh, final state as a ground state and that ground state will encode the solution to our combinatorial optimization problem so in this way using quantum annealers we can solve uh, different kinds of combinatorial optimization problems. and as far as uh, the work uh, along uh, mrna uh, uh, mrna uh, is so uh, Uh, structuring and the sequencing was concerned that that was simply a quadratic program like a binary quadratic model and uh, that uses this uh, uh, the hamiltonian was designed as a ising hamiltonian and once we have an ising hamiltonian we can uh, run that type of a problem on uh, quantum annealers for example the one that is provided by a dbase so uh, largely what we have been studying is the gate based quantum computing where we have circuits and we have gates but there is an alternative approach to quantum computing which is called this quantum annealing and uh, within quantum annealers what we do is we, we tend to solve a special type of problems like combinatorial optimization problems we encode the problems in uh, the physical systems and the physical system evolves in a way that will give us a solution hope that answers your question yes sir yes sir. but this like uh, like uh, this is uh, uh, quantum computing is another area of research in quantum uh, computing but actually this course is designed for gate based uh, quantum computers right that is uh, that is true but you find sections in uh, there is a section applications or i think algorithms for applications of quantum computing or something like that so there we discuss uh, not just this method but quantum annealing methods we discuss the icing model and we discuss methods to solve combinatorial optimization problems using both gate based techniques like for example qaoa and also some quantum inspired techniques and uh, i i will uh, also point out so this is something uh, outside of the course scope but as far as the research in the community is concerned quantum annealers have not demonstrated any particular advantage neither from an uh, technological point of view nor from a uh, economic or a uh, cost point of view because at the scale uh, the scale at which we can solve a problem using quantum annealers 
again quantum annealers are based on super the ones that are provided by d waves these are based on superconducting qubits so they require a lot of cooling and other cost factors come in while setting up that system but uh, problems larger than what the d wave machines can solve can be solved classically with either similar or better performance so that is also a big question is why should the one look into quantum annealers when these problems can be solved even going ahead because ultimately there will be scalability issues with quantum annealers as well actually the 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 uh, one of the interesting thing is uh, for example if one wants to make a mrna vaccine which will code for the spike protein of the coronavirus the spike protein is around 1350 residues long so to make a protein of that length 1350 mn sets you know the mrna sequence uh, like uh, the, the the number of possible mrna sequences which can be made is uh, you know like uh, something like uh, 10 power uh, 680 like that uh, that means like this is not uh, soluble by any uh, like if you want to find one optimal mrna sequence from this 10 power 680 10 power 680 is like a astronomical number so uh, that is not possible using uh, any uh, classical computer right yeah that is correct so we define these class of problems as uh, combinatorial optimization problems and uh, there are indications that as quantum computers become much more mature they will be able to solve these kind of problems um i just want to add that uh, you know when we were talking about uh, long distance communication the quantum repeater is the one uh, name i was forgetting so we use quantum repeater to generate long distance uh, entanglement channel uh, so there's an article here i just posted on chat and if you want to learn about uh, in general quantum channels right uh, quantum network what are the different technology satellite and there is a good wikipedia is written there so you can also ha have a look uh, with quantum networks where you use long distance quantum entanglement and then how you establish it or all those details are good so that's good Thank you, thank you, Dr. So, uh, I have to drop now, uh, but uh, if somebody have a very quick question, he can ask me. Uh, so, okay, if there is no question, uh, maybe Laksha will take care of uh, the other questions. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks, Arun. Yeah, any other question, please? Uh, all, all right, if uh, we don't have any other question, I, I would request everyone to please fill out the feedback form that is in the chat. We'll wait for one or two minutes for you uh, to fill out the feedback form and then we'll end the session. Uh, Ishita, one of the candidates asked for uh, so a distribute something related to distributed quantum computing. So, uh, is that student here? Uh, okay. I'm not sure, Lakshya. All right. So, uh, if you have filled the feedback form uh, quickly, if you can mention done in the chat, then it would be great. Uh, thank you so much, Rajram. Thank you, Santosh. Thank you, Harish. Thanks, Hemant. 
थैंक यू सो मच सुभाष हर्षित अरुण ऑल राइट आई थिंक वी कैन कंक्लूड द सेशन नाउ ओके सत्या सत्या यू कैन अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ यू कैन आस्क योर क्वेश्चन हियर इट्स सेल्फ हां हाय मैडम या आई एम रोल्ड इनटू द स्कोर्स बट आई टुक टू मंथ्स ब्रेक सो आई एम नॉट श्योर लाइक टिल व्हेन दिस इज कोर्स इज वैलिड so i'm not i'm not in a flow so i want to start somewhat from the beginning so i can you hear me uh, okay satya so for that i have to check uh, yeah i can hear you for that i have to check the your validity of the course separately and i'll give you a call from my end no issues i have yes, noted uh, your name as well yeah so actually in whatsapp get... i message but no one replied sometime back uh okay. will you call me when you message uh some long time back actually i was out for some yeah time. yeah okay yeah if you call me that way yes. all right sir i'll give you for monday no issue okay yeah. okay thank thanks sir i can mail right thank you yeah. yeah you can write a mail as well to support at the rate qpi ai dot tech okay. okay all right so no more questions so uh, thank you so open for your time hope this discussion has been informative and useful for all of you and if you still have any further questions like uh, later as well of course you can ask in the forum itself or you can write a separate mail to us and uh, if you have a lot of questions you can request me to arrange a one on one mentorship uh, mentor session as well i'll arrange that as well okay so thank you so much everyone for your time